Welcome back. We're moving to session 48 on whom should you serve. In the last session, I tried to put you in an imaginary situation where you were in a small group for three months and people knew each other, they were being comfortable, and then I mentioned 21 different ways that people might contribute to the small group. Each of those contributions was matched to a spiritual gift. You wrote down either yes or no, that would be you, and hopefully you're now beginning to see a pattern emerge where you could identify your spiritual gift. But if not, then I encourage you to go out and engage in more ministry because my guess is that you don't have enough ministry experience to be able to see where in fact does your spiritual gift come into play. Well, it's one thing to know your spiritual gift. What do you do with it? I mean, now I know it, so. Well, you could use your spiritual gift everywhere you go. That makes sense. But you won't know what ministry to serve in just by having your spiritual gift. If your spiritual gift is helps, what ministry in the church do you go to? They all need helps. So that doesn't help you. So I'm going to show you a diagram that hopefully will help you understand whom do you serve. All right? Some of you have participated in archery. Archery is the game where you have a bow and an arrow, and you have a target, and you shoot the arrow at the target. And of course, you are trying to hit the bullseye. That happens very rarely, but it happens. All right, the people in this bullseye represent the people or the issue that is nearest and dearest to your heart. There's a group of people that you desire to have an impact on, and as a result, they're your bullseye. They're the ones that would be most likely to benefit from you using your spiritual gift. Now, then of course we know there's an inner circle. These would be people who are close to your bullseye, but not quite. For example, let's say that these people here are children. You love working with children. And these people out here might be middle schoolers. They're close, but not the same thing. Now, you could shoot the spiritual gift and hit there and be very effective, or you could shoot there and be less effective. One more group there, and we have a middle group and we have an outer group. So in our analogy, if you don't hit the bullseye, which would be children, and if you don't hit here, you might hit here where you're working with high school students. A little older, you give your gift to them, it's satisfying, but they're not the people that are really embedded in your heart, that you love being with, and that you want to help them, you want to uh, impact their lives. So you could use it there, or maybe you hit here, and now you're working with people who are in college. And that's enjoyable, but you're a long way from children here. And then there are those times, like me, where you miss the bullseye, you miss the target, and it's off in the back. And that could be adults. So there is a group that God has embedded in your heart where you love to be with that group or you want to make a difference in their lives. And if it's not a group of people, then it's an issue in your society, like the homeless. Or it might be having better education in the schools. There's something within you where you say, I want to make a difference. If this was the one way that I would make a difference with my one and only life, 
This is how it would be. So the point is, first we want you to identify what's your audience. Is your audience a group of people or is your audience a social issue? So first identify that because that will help you say where should I serve? If I know that my bullseye is children, probably the best place to serve would be Sunday school. Now there might be other children's programs, but you wouldn't serve in student ministries, you wouldn't serve in college and career, you wouldn't serve in adult ministries. It's not the group that you really feel that God has given you a strong desire to impact. And then what you do is you give your spiritual gift to that group. Few people hit the bullseye the first time out. It isn't like you're going to know right away, yeah, that's my group. It takes some time trying out the adults, trying out the uh, middle school students, high school, college and career, before you finally say, ah, it's children. So don't be disappointed if you go out and you shoot your arrow, your spiritual gift, and you try it out here and then you go, oh, no, that's not it. You know, I just don't feel like I enjoy being there, I enjoy serving. Let me try something else. I'll try this. But eventually, you will find your bullseye. You do not find out where to serve by your spiritual gift. You find out whom to serve here. And that leads you to a ministry where those people or that issue is most likely to be. So, if it's children, and it's Sunday school is where the children are most likely to be. Or vacation Bible school, or Awana, or the Christmas program, or something where the children are going to be at. And then, the spiritual gift tells you what you do in that ministry. If your gift is administration and your uh, audience are children, then you help plan the schedule, the program, what's going to happen when. If it's teaching, you teach the children. If it's mercy, then you identify those children who have lost a parent or are going through a hard time and you come alongside the family to help them. So, you identify your audience and that tells you where to serve. Once you get to the right audience, then you try to explore what do I do when I'm serving my audience. Now hopefully this diagram clarifies the bigger picture of what we're trying to do. Spiritual gifts, of course, are the most important thing because that's where God empowers you to make a difference but you want to make the greatest difference that you can. You want to be in a place where you're fulfilled and where the people are served. And that will be the group of people that God has placed on your heart. There is a verse in Psalm. We're not going to go to it right now because I know it by memory. Psalm 37, 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. You see, he's embedded within you from before the time you were born, when he first designed and created you, when he first knew your purpose in life. And he said, yeah, that's what you're going to do. So you'll need this spiritual gift. You will, yeah, this is the audience that you should serve. And this is the place you should serve because your purpose in life is to serve. And you want to serve in the place you'll be most effective. So here's what we're going to do now. We're doing another activity where I'm going to read off first the name of a group. And you just write down the names of the group and check the ones that you think are groups that 
you enjoy being around this group. You look forward to being with this group. You come away energized being around this group. And you would love to make a difference in the lives of the people in this group. Then you can put a check. So this will not be as hard as our last activity because there's no numbers and because there's just one word. For example, the first word is adults. Do you enjoy being around adults? People who are in their 30s and above, because we'll have one on the 20s. Do you enjoy being with them? Do you get energized? Would you like to make a difference in the life of adults in general? Write down the name of the group and write down yes if it applies to you. Second one, children. Do you love being around children? Do they make you come alive? My son works in our Sunday school. We call it Promised Land. And he loves children. And they love him. They just light up when they see him. And he comes home like his battery has been charged up to overflowing. He's found his audience. Perhaps it's a general group of Christians. Like when I'm with Christians in general, I just enjoy being there. If that's true, write down the name Christians and just put a check next to it. The next group would be couples, married couples. Being with people who are married, you enjoy being with other couples, you would like to make a difference in their marriage and in their parenting. You want them to succeed as a couple. Or perhaps it's leaders. You enjoy being around leaders. And when you're with leaders, something happens within you that is like an electric charge that lights you up. And where you say, I belong here. And I'd really like leaders to be the best leaders they can be. How about those who are Christians in general, but they're mature believers? They've been walking with Christ for quite some time. And as they walk with Christ, they become more mature in their faith. And when you're with them, you feel at home. It's like, this is the place I'm supposed to be. I like being with them. Uh, I want mature believers to continue to be walking in the faith and to help those who are less mature in their faith, not quite as far along on the path of Christianity to become mature themselves. Or do you like new believers? Do you enjoy it when somebody first comes to Christ and you want to help them understand what this new life is all about and their excitement is contagious for you and you walk away energized and you say I really want them to grow in Christ. This next one applies by gender. In other words, for men, do you enjoy it when you're in the company of other men? And there's something about being together and doing manly things that you enjoy and it just makes you feel good. Or for women, do you enjoy it when you are around other women and they can support you and encourage you and listen to you and help you? Is that a place where not only do you enjoy it, but you say, I would like women to grow in their faith to become Proverbs 31 women women who are fully devoted to God and who are walking in the faith. Perhaps you like working with non-believers. You like it when you're out there with people who aren't Christians or people that we call seekers. And the difference is being an unbeliever, they're far from the faith. It's going to take a while probably before they really are in a place that they're ready to hear the gospel. But seekers are people who they themselves are curious. What is this Christianity all about? Either of those groups 
You know, do you feel an attraction? Do you feel like you belong there? Do you want to help them? How about the poor or people who are hurting? People who are, have suffered any type of loss that you just, your heart goes out to them and you want to go to them. You want to help them. You want them to recover from whatever the loss is. If that's your group, write it down. How about senior citizens? I'm getting awfully close to that group. In fact, if we say that it's 55 and over, I'm in that group. So I like 65 and older. But do you enjoy being around older people? Maybe going and visiting them in uh, their homes, uh, going to a nursing home or an assisted living place, visiting them in an extended family's home. Is this a place that you'd like to help seniors have a meaningful last part of their life? How about singles? People who are unmarried. Do you enjoy being with people who are single? And that it's a place that is comfortable and you want to help them be comfortable in their single life and perhaps if God is calling them to find a mate. How about teenagers? Teenagers are a very different breed and teenagers include middle schoolers and high school. Do you like being with the young people? Do you like hanging out with them and you know listening to their you know, plans of what their life is going to be like and the problems they're having with a boyfriend or a girlfriend and, uh, or how they've done on, in, in some athletic contest. Does that really encourage you and tell you, this is the place I want to be? How about young adults in their 20s, 20-something? Just being around that group, they're, they're out of high school, they're out of college, they're beginning their careers, they're dating, uh, they're beginning to think about settling down and hoping that God would bring a man or a woman into their lives to get married and start a home. Is that the group? Or perhaps it is some other group I have not mentioned. For example, some people feel drawn to working with prisoners, people who have been placed in jail, their whole lives seem to have turned upside down? Or is it women who have experienced a tragedy where they have been abused in their home? Or they have suffered uh, a sexual experience that scars them? Are these things that would appeal to you? So I may not have mentioned everything. Maybe there's something else. Is there a group there that you feel you've been drawn to. Now hopefully as you've written down these different names, you've gotten more than one written down. And if that's the case, then I'd like you to look at all the ones you wrote down, all the groups that you felt comfortable with, and I'd like you to put them in rank order so that you look at the list and you say, yeah, this is the top group for me. That's the one I think I feel the greatest intensity. And then this is second, this is third, this is fourth, this is fifth. The reason we're doing that is much like spiritual gifts. You go out and you try being around that group. And you notice, am I really enjoying this? Is this a group I feel comfortable with? And is it a group I want to make a difference in? And often the group that you feel the most comfortable with is the group that fits you personally. If you're single, you may enjoy being with other singles. If you're married, couples make sense. If you've gone through a loss of a loved one, as I have, I feel comfortable with those who have faced a similar situation. We often find the group that is our audience through the pain in our own life. We often find the group that is our audience by the group that brings us the most joy, both sides. But it usually is a group that you belong to, but not always, not always. Have you benefited from our teaching ministry? 
Have you found TVS videos helpful and relevant? Please consider supporting us with your prayers and financial gifts. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com. All right, that's groups of people. But this desire of your heart might also apply to society in general. Because let's face it, our world faces a lot of problems. Each of our nations face a lot of problems. Each of our communities have problems. Our families, our schools, our churches. There are no lack of problems and challenges in the world. And maybe there's one of them that God has embedded in your heart where you say, I want <clears throat> to change that. Something's wrong there and I want to make it right. Something should be done about that and I want to do it. So let's look at some of these and this is on the area of social issues. For example, maybe you feel drawn to the church in general. You know, the church isn't perfect. I mean, we don't have everybody serving in the church. Some churches haven't grown in years. I know of churches where not one new believer has been one to Christ in years. Something's wrong with that church. There, something is not right. If that resonates, that a church should be more evangelical, or perhaps it's when churches are fighting and you just can't stand it, the believers aren't getting along with each other and you want them to come together, is that something that you'd like to make a difference in? Or maybe it's the health care system, meaning medicine. You know, it's hard for people to find a doctor. It's harder still to pay for the doctor. And maybe you're a person who you have a heart that everybody should be able to get health care, especially people who are poor, or maybe people who are in developing countries where there are no doctors, where there are no medical clinics, and your heart breaks over that and you say, somebody should do something. Maybe you're the somebody who should do something about it. And then maybe it's the legal system, the whole system of justice, that poor people, they can't afford any sort of an attorney to help them. Maybe it's that um, you are an attorney and you would like to have fellowship with other lawyers. And so you have a heart to bring Christian attorneys together so that they can fellowship with each other. Many people find the social issue embedded in their heart relates to marriage and the family. Because marriage is hard. Parenting is hard. I have experience in both. And I can tell you, it's hard. Marriage, you basically have two people who are sinners who come into close contact with each other, there's going to be explosions from time to time. Disagreements, arguments. How do you work those out so there's not a divorce? And if there's a divorce, how do you help that person get their life back together and move on so that maybe down the line they find someone else and they can get married again? And in that marriage, they do things differently than they did in the first marriage. Or maybe it's parenting. You just want people to learn how to be a parent. There are times I see how parents talk to their children out in the street and I think, what are you doing? Calling them names, yelling at them, hitting them. It's like, this is your child. Maybe that also resonates within you and you want to make sure that children grow up healthy, they grow up, grow up strong. Just two more. One would be the schools. Again, a topic that I have a lot of experience with. And maybe you want to make sure that you have the best possible school that you have. And so you'd like to get involved in schools. Maybe join with other parents to make the school better. Or perhaps you're concerned about the safety of the children 
going to school, coming home from school, and you would like to make sure that they are safe. Or it could be you would like to see a program where students witness to other students. Or perhaps your heart breaks because there's underprivileged children, poor children. They don't have the resources, so they don't have clothes, they don't have shoes, they don't have books. And you feel it shouldn't be so, and you want to do something about it. Look deep in your heart, because in your heart, God has embedded either a group of people or a social issue that you were made to do something about. To help group of people be all that they can be. To help groups of people come to Christ. To help those people interact with one another in a positive way. Or it may be that there's something out in society that you say, that's wrong, I want to make it right. And I want to put together a group that will work on that problem so that the time I go to be with the Lord, things are just a little bit better. You see, I honestly believe that when you finally leave earth, if you can leave and say, I made a difference. My life counted. What I did with my one and only life mattered that you can die being fulfilled. How can you do that? Well, one is on the character side. You can become more like Christ by building your relationship with Him. That is number one on God's agenda, that you come to Him and you become more like Christ. But the other part is what do you do with your life? What actual activities do you engage in? Where do you put your time? Where do you put your talent? Where do you put your treasure? You see, we can't make a difference everywhere, but we can make a difference somewhere. There is a story that's told about a man who was taking a walk along the ocean. And while he was walking along the ocean, he happened to look down the bluff at the beach. And he noticed that there was a boy whom he thought was picking up rocks and throwing the rocks into the ocean. And he thought, you know, I haven't done that in years. I think I'll go down and throw a few rocks. Well, he got down there and he found out that the boy wasn't throwing rocks. He was throwing starfish that had been left on the beach when the tide went back out. And if they remained on the beach, they die. And this boy was picking up a starfish, throwing it, picking up a starfish and throwing it, picking up a starfish and throwing it. And the man said, what are you doing? There's thousands and thousands of starfish. There's no way that you're going to be able to save all of them. There's no way you can make a difference with every one of them. The boy picked up a starfish, threw it out in the sea, and looked at the man and said, I made a difference to that starfish. Whom do you want to make a difference? How do you want to live your only life? Do you want to live it to serve a group of people on behalf of Jesus Christ? Do you want to make a difference in changing society and making it better? God has a place for you to serve so that when you go to heaven, you can look Jesus in the face and hear him say those words, well done, good and faithful servant. Thank you for being with us during this session. In the next session, we're going to talk about where do you serve? Please join us.